Welcome to the McMaster University Demystifying Medicine Seminar Series. I'm Pavitra. And I'm Rod. We're continuing with our series based on Dr. Norman L. Jones' book called The Ins and Outs of Breathing. Today, we will be focusing on Chapter 7, The Control of Breathing, Part 1. We will cover central and peripheral control of breathing in the body, including chemoreceptor activity, and we will conclude by talking about integration between factors controlling breathing. So, let's begin! The way in which breathing is controlled is very complicated, and there are many aspects of respiratory control that are still debatable. In the year 1994 at the University of Toronto, Dr. Elliot Phillipson and his colleagues showed findings concerning adult sheep and dogs. Basically, it involves connecting an artificial membrane lung to the vein that brought blood back to the heart. This was done to remove carbon dioxide from the animals. Over time, the amount of carbon dioxide being removed increased and the animal's ability to breathe reduced. Ultimately, it was concluded that the control of breathing is related to the quantity of carbon dioxide coming back to the lung. Later on, it was said that both carbon dioxide and oxygen were equally important for regulating breathing. Another prominent figure was Julian John Cesar, an experimental physiologist who possessed incredible technical skills but was known to conduct controversial experiments. In his experiments investigating the role of the brain in regulating the heart and the respiration, he usually began by opening the skull of a rabbit. Then, he removed different parts of the brain such as the cerebrum and the cortex in successive fashion until the rabbit showed a change in its breathing patterns. The rabbit's breathing showed no change. However, as soon as he removed the lower medulla at the 8th cranial nerve level, breathing stopped instantaneously. This allowed him to conclude the existence of a respiratory center. His conclusions not only made him a very important figure in respiratory physiology, but also provided a foundation for future studies conducted by physiologists investigating the respiratory center. Moving outside of the brain, our breathing control system responds to several stimuli, each to a different extent. These stimuli include carbon dioxide, oxygen, and hydrogen ion. The effect of carbon dioxide on the control of breathing was first demonstrated in the 19th century by Leon Frederick. Frederick performed two cross-circulation experiments on dogs. Specifically, he connected the arteries and veins supplying the head of one dog to the other. In the first experiment, Frederick blocked the trachea of the first dog, which causes the blood with high carbon dioxide and low oxygen to flow to the second dog. As a result, he observed an increase in breathing in the second dog. In the second experiment, Frederick put the first dog on the treadmill to artificially increase breathing in the first dog. This caused blood with low carbon dioxide and high oxygen to flow to the second dog. As a result, he observed a decrease in breathing in the second dog to the point where breathing actually stopped. But what about the effects of oxygen on the control of breathing? John Scott Halden and John Gillies Priestley at the University of Oxford found that an increase of 1 to 2 mm mercury of inspired carbon dioxide pressure doubled the ventilation rate. On the other hand, a reduction of 50 mm mercury of inspired oxygen pressure was required to have any effect on ventilation rate. And what about the effects of blood acidity on the control of breathing? Again, Haldane and Priestley found that the effects of carbon dioxide far exceeded the effects of acid injection. However, blood acidity still has an effect in the medulla. The medulla is a small chemosensitive region in the brain that responds to changes in acidity. There are also several other chemosensitive tissues that influence breathing, which we discussed in the next section. From these experiments, we can see how breathing can be controlled by many factors, but carbon dioxide remains a predominant factor in the control of breathing. Throughout the 18th to 20th centuries, many different scientists discovered a small organ rich with chemoreceptors that played a very important role in the control of breathing. Chemoreceptors are receptors that detect chemical changes and transmit the signal as a nervous impulse. The carotid body is a small organ responsible for sensing chemical changes in the blood and conveying the message to the brain to regulate breathing. This organ is located at the junction where a common carotid artery splits and this is an ideal position as it is close to the aorta. Thus, the carotid body can sense blood straight from the heart which is freshly oxygenated. The father and son scientist duo, the Heyman, performed cross-circulation experiments with dogs where blood vessels from each dog's head were connected, which allowed for shared circulation, keeping blood pressure in the brains normal. Changes in breathing when aortic blood pressure was altered was observed. Interestingly, Changes in breathing were also present upon altering carbon dioxide, hydrogen ion, and oxygen levels in aortic blood, which proved the function of the carotid body. So, all of the factors we've looked at so far integrate for homeostasis by control of blood carbon dioxide and oxygen levels. The carbon dioxide produced by metabolic processes, as we have learned, has the dominant effect on breathing, 
a significantly decreased arterial oxygen pressure, that is, less than 60 millimeters of mercury compared to the normal of 100, activates breathing mechanisms of the carotid body. Blood pressure changes may have an effect on breathing through receptors throughout the body. Nervous input from chemosensitive tissues affect the part of the brain that makes a central rhythmic pattern called a central rhythm generator. This concludes part one of the control of breathing. Be sure to check out our next video and subscribe to the McMaster Demystifying Medicine channel for more awesome videos. This is Pavitra and Rod signing off. Thanks for listening. Bye.